So we got an 83 red 944 coming in tonight. Alright guys, when it rains it pours. Last night, late last night in fact, I got this red 83 944 into the shop. And basically, we're just going to get it running. Change the belts, rollers, water pump, things like that. And make sure that it is a good daily driver. And I'll go ahead and lift the hood here. You can see the paint's not in great condition. But... The owner seems to be pretty happy with it. He's not sure if he wants it painted yet or not. He kind of likes the rough look to it. So, you know, I'm going to go ahead and just do the engine work, get all the wiring straightened out since it's all a mess, and then let him drive it a while and see if he wants it painted. No big rush. The interior looks to be in fairly decent shape. This is an automatic transmission car, and I'm going to be installing radio speakers and things like that has racing seats in here that look to be in pretty good shape other than being a little faded but overall the body is very straight on this car and you can see it looks like we have cup wheels here with a gigantic spacer on there the old paint jobs running a little bit but other than that it looks to be a solid car to work on and He's done a lot of work to this car already. There just seems to be some gremlins in here that I'll have to figure out. But other than that, we'll get it running. And if he wants a paint job, we'll worry about that later on. Sorry, we're slowly breaking this engine down. Doesn't need too much. As I said, we're gonna go through and fix some of this wiring. See there's some mismatched bolts on the intake, but other than that, we're gonna be taking it off, replacing those bolts, and replacing the air wool separator seals. And you can also see that there's no belt covers on this engine. I'll be replacing those since you don't want your alternator belt flying off and taking out your timing belt. But anyway, other than that, this car looks to be in pretty good shape. We'll get it cleaned up and as far as I know, this engine was running. He drove it a little bit, so I'll be replacing the speed and reference sensors and things like that, just to make sure it's gonna stay reliable. All right, so I'm working on removing the belts here. You can see that the balance shafts are way out of time. And like I mentioned, I'm gonna be replacing this belt cover. I also have the air oil separator out, or the oil filler neck, whichever you wanna call it. And I'm going to be replacing the seals here. It looks like this engine has had some milkshake in the past. I don't know if you can see down in there. I'm going to try and clean that out the best I can. And if it has, then I may need to speak to the owner because we'll need to replace the rod bearings in this engine before they fail. All right, guys, as I'm removing the belts, I realized that this car has power steering. And then I looked at the VIN and realized that it was an 84. So I'm not sure where I got 83 from, but that's how I introduced the car. I'm not sure if the owner told me that or whatever, but anyway, this is an 84 and I'd just like to correct that. Today, I'm going to be removing the water pump here so that way I can replace it. I'm also going to be removing the oil cooler there and making sure there's no sludge in here. And here's something I thought you guys might find interesting. Usually the heads on these cars are pretty clean you can see the intake ports here have some sort of gum in there and I think that's from some bad fuel. Alright, so today I'm going to be dumping the coolant and removing the water pump and the oil cooler. I now have the water pump off and everything looks to be in pretty good shape aside from a lot of RTV. There were two missing bolts, one here and here, which might explain the RTV. And this pump doesn't look too old. You can see the thermostat looks relatively new. So there's no gasket installed here. 
but that's just par for the course. I'm gonna go ahead and start removing the oil cooler now. All right, I'm gonna be removing the oil cooler now, and what I'll do is remove the bolts and then slide it forward here where the water pump was, and it should come right out. And once I do that, I'm gonna be checking for any signs of any oil or coolant mixing. All right, I've got the water pump and the oil cooler pulled now. I've also got the car up on ramp. So what I'm gonna do is get underneath there and remove the starter so that way I can put the flywheel lock on. All right, I got the flywheel lock on. I've also got sprockets removed. And now I'm gonna go ahead and remove this power steering bracket so that way I can replace the lower balance shaft seals. So as you can see, someone's removed this rear belt cover before and they've had to remove these sprockets and you can see that the lower balance shaft is not on there correctly and that's just something I always like to check before I remove them. I have the front main seal out now and also I have the cap off the lower balance shaft. As I mentioned I was searching for signs of oil and coolant mixing and you can see signs of it here. Alright so unfortunately it looks like there was coolant mixing with the oil so I'm gonna have to remove the oil pan and change the rod bearings. Another thing I want to do is go ahead and get this head off and replace the head gasket as well because when I pulled the oil cooler down here everything looked to be in pretty good shape and that's normally where I would think the mixing is occurring so I'm thinking that perhaps this car has a bad head gasket. Alright so today I'm going to have James remove this cam tower. Alright we're going to go ahead and pull this cam tower now. Thing looks good nice and clean in here stuck on the automatic trans lines All right, we got the exhaust unbolted and we're getting ready to remove the head. Right. Let's see what kind of condition of things we're working with here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this gasket here and I wasn't sure why the oil was mixing with the coolant and my best guess was that it was a blown head gasket since the oil cooler seals hadn't been touched and I'm not entirely sure if it was something that had just occurred but you can see that there's signs here of the coolant and the oil and this head gasket doesn't actually look to be too old so I'm thinking that someone had found that the coolant was mixing with the oil and changed the head gasket but I had to go back in there because apparently there's still cooling in the oil and it wasn't fixed correctly. So unfortunately, I've had to go back in here to change the head gasket one more time and then do it all again. And you can see here on the block that they didn't even clean anything up. So that's all the old original gasket material on there. As you can see this one's still in perfect shape so this wasn't cleaned up and there was a bunch of mixed match bolts you had bolts in the header here and some of the bolts didn't even have washers and things like that it's just a complete mess so anyway we're gonna go back through and make sure that everything is put together correctly get rid of all this old gasket material and get rid of all that coolant that's in the oil change the rod bearings and we'll make sure that everything's in tip-top shape all right, last night we got the head off, and today I'm going to be taking it to the machine shop. Usually I like to clean these up myself, but I'm going to try and take it over there and have them extract the stud as well. Should save me a lot of time since I'm trying to get caught up. So, all right, I got the head at the machine shop. I'm having them inspect it to make sure that it isn't warped and still causing an issue. We just drained the oil so that way we can drop the cross member and get the oil pan off. And the oil was really clumpy and coagulated so I'm thinking there's still a mixing issue. All right so I got the support bar set up here and that's going to give James a little bit more room to work underneath the car. Usually I like to use the hoist but the legs often get in the way and what he's doing is removing the cross member there so that way we can drop the oil pan 
and change the rod bearing. So anyway, you can see here that the coolant still looks clean. So I'm not sure exactly what's going on, but I'm gonna be replacing the housing and the cooler itself along with the seals to make sure that nothing is going to leak once we get it back together. So as I mentioned, there was a bunch of varnished fuel that was caked onto the end tank port. So I figured I would go ahead and pull the injectors and send them off to be cleaned. And as you can see here, the injectors are just absolutely packed with varnish. So I'm gonna send these off and hopefully they'll get them cleaned up. Sorry, right, James got the cross member off last night. I took the head to the machine shop early this morning and sent the injectors off. All right, I just picked the head up from the machine shop. I had them clean it up and do a full valve job. They also just lightly skimmed this without removing much material at all. It was slightly warped and you can see that there's some pitting there and they wanted to make sure that the head gasket was gonna seal properly. So that could have been part of the issue. Let me go ahead and roll this over here. You see now that it looks much better. There's no more of that plasticky coating down in there, which won't allow the fuel to atomize correctly. But anyway, it's all cleaned out. The valves look good. And once I get the block cleaned up, we'll be ready to install it. It's all right, James got the oil pan off last night, and today I'm gonna to be changing the rod bearings. As I mentioned, the oil was full of sludge, and you can see ubiquitous signs of coolant in the oil so we've got to get those changed out before they fail on us while I have the engine broken down I'm going to be checking the flex damper here since this is an automatic car and they are very prone to fail this one looks to be in good shape but I'll investigate it further to make sure that it is because I would hate to return this to the owner only to have it fail soon after and another thing that I need to do is check the end play of the crankshaft to make sure that the thrust bearing isn't worn out. So all right, I just checked the flex damper. I rotated the engine and it doesn't appear to be broken. I can't feel anything or see any cracks. So I think this is in pretty good shape. I also checked the end play of the crankshaft and it's well within spec, it barely moves. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the rod bearings. All right, so I'm pulling number three now. And you can see all that coolant there. I'll go ahead and get the bearing out. And it doesn't look to be in bad shape, but you can see all the coolant that's in between the bearing and the crank there. So, all right, as you can see, there's a bunch of coolant here, and I'm gonna be cleaning this up and replacing the bearings. The bearings that I pulled are the original ones and they do look to be in pretty good shape. So it doesn't look like the coolant had mixed for very long. So it looks like we caught everything in time. All right, so here are the bearings that I removed. This one's from cylinder two, this one's from cylinder three. And you can see that they look to be in pretty good condition. So I'm not sure exactly how long the coolant had been mixing, but it doesn't look like it damaged anything, luckily but they are the original bearings. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace them with these over here and I'll go ahead and get them in. All right, so before replacing the bearings, you wanna make sure that you clean everything up. This is before and here it is after. All right, so here are the old bearings and here's the new ones. All right, so this car came originally with smooth rod nuts and I'm going to be replacing them with new rib nuts. All right, just finished number four and I'm installing number one now. It looks like this one was the worst of all. Sorry, you can see that I have the piston pushed up out of the way there and that's allowing me to get my finger around the crank there so that way I can remove all that oil and coolant. Sorry guys, got the rod bearings changed now and as I mentioned when I first started out, wasn't entirely certain that the oil was mixing with the coolant but as I dug deeper I found that it was and while that's not one of my favorite jobs to do, it is something that needed to be done in order to make this car reliable. All right, while we got the oil pan off, I figured I'd have James go ahead and pull the lower balance shaft housing since the rear seal is leaking. All right, James just got the lower balance shaft out. You can see that there's coolant on this as well. We're going to be cleaning all this up, of course. I'll go ahead and hand the camera off to him and let him get a shot down in there. 
So all right, I currently have the oil pan, the water pump, and the balance shafts off, so that way I can replace the leaky seals on the rear of the housings there. And while I've got everything apart, I thought it'd be the best time to go ahead and clean everything up. This isn't something I typically do unless someone asks me to, but I've gotten so many requests to clean the blocks up lately that it might just be something that I start doing regardless. So I'm gonna go ahead and start cleaning this engine up so that way I can get it back together. All right guys, I got everything cleaned up now. It isn't perfect, but it looks a lot better than it did. You can see I even cleaned up some of the wiring. So I'm gonna go ahead and start putting everything back together now. I'm gonna be installing the oil cooler housing first and you can see that I'm gonna be installing this 6R housing to replace the 5R that was on this block. And something that I noticed as I was cleaning this gunk up here, I noticed that there is a broken stud in there. And when I was removing the water pump, I'd noticed that there was a bolt missing there, but I didn't think much of it. So unfortunately, I'm gonna have to get this out and you can see it looks like someone has attempted to drill in there, but I have another method that I'm gonna be trying. So what we're going to do is use a MIG welder to weld a ball on the end of the stud and that should give us a way to grab onto it so we can extract it. Here James has been practicing on a spare block of mine that had a few broken studs in it. So alright, James pulled the oil pan so that way I could replace the rod bearings and you can see what kind of mess this oil pan is in here. I mentioned that the oil was very thick and slimy and you can see just how bad it is here. And this alone is good enough reason to go ahead and do the rod bearings just so you can pull the oil pan out and clean it up after you have coolant and oil because this is just a huge nasty mess that absolutely must be cleaned up. All right, it's time to start putting this engine back together. So I've got my gasket set here and I'm gonna start by installing the oil cooler. All right, I'm now ready to install the oil cooler housing. All right, I have the oil cooler installed now, so next I'll go ahead and reinstall the balance shaft housings. So I wanted to put the balance shaft covers on before installing the oil pan, but unfortunately my last tube of Loctite 574 is completely dried out. So I've had to order a new tube, I didn't realize I was out, so while I'm waiting for that to come in, I'm gonna go ahead and put the oil pan on. You can see I've got it cleaned up here. All right, so now I have the oil pan reinstalled, and next I'm gonna install the new front main seal. So next I'll install the new oil pump sleeve. So what I like to do before I install these, I like to take a little assembly lube and run it around the edge here. So I'll go ahead and put it in now. And the reason why I like to oil this is so that way the seal doesn't start dry. All right, so now that I have the front main seal installed, I'm gonna be replacing the seals for the balance shafts and also the air oil separator seals. So I got the new air oil separator seals on now and I replaced all the seals here. Unfortunately, this thing is a little bit too beat up for my taste. You can see here that it's got a lot of marks on it and I didn't think that was gonna be an issue, but once I press the new seal in there, you can see that it has deformed it and I don't want to use this since it may leak so I'm going to trash this cap here and then I'm just going to trash this seal and I'll put the new collar and this new o-ring on another end. So alright I moved the collar over to this one and I installed a new seal here and a new o-ring so this is ready to go now. This is the seal that I pulled out of this one here and you can see just where it caught it. And I'm not sure if this would actually leak, but, you know, if I can't do something right, I'm just not going to do it at all. So I'm just going to throw that in the trash, and we'll use this one here. All right, last night I got the new front main seal and the oil pan on. And today I'm going to be installing the air oil separator and the balance shaft housings. I got my new tubes of 574 in, which didn't take long. 
So I'm ready to get this engine back together now. Alright, I've got the oil filler neck on now and I also have the upper balance shaft installed and this engine is coming together beautifully. Next, I'm going to go ahead and install the lower balance shaft housing. Alright, now that I have the upper balance shaft on, I'm going to go ahead and install the lower one here. Alright, the lower balance shaft is now installed. It's all right, James has got the welder hooked up and we're gonna be removing these studs from the block. So we just tried to remove the stud but didn't have much luck. The weld just would not stick to that stud. So I'm just gonna move on from now. I don't wanna risk damaging the block. All right, I'm gonna have James reinstall the cross member now, but before we do, going to try and clean it up and replace these broken engine mounts you can see this one has completely come apart and this one here is crushed I have two used ones here that we'll be installing and hopefully you can see the difference all right so James got the cross member in last night and today I'm going to be lowering the engine back onto its mounts So right now I've got the engine back down on the mounts, I'm going to install some new speed and reference sensors and put the head back on. So I got the speed and reference sensors out now and I always like to replace these because they will fail without warning and it also gives me an opportunity to make sure that they're gapped properly. If the gap isn't set properly then you can see some marks sometimes on the end here. But anyway, I had to remove the air oil separator not to remove those but I saw a few other issues that I missed. I installed the air oil separator at night and I didn't get a good look at this heater core control line so I need to get this fixed as well and I just figured it'd be easier to just go ahead and remove it to have better access to the reference sensors as well. So as you can see the metal clip is missing here and someone's got it zip tied. Whenever you turn the heat on you're pulling on this cable and if this black sleeve comes with it then it won't activate properly. So I have a metal clip here that I'll be installing and hopefully that'll fix this correctly. All right, I've got this working properly again. When I slide the knob inside, this opens and closes here. And you can see I've got a metal clamp on there and that's what actually keeps this black piece from sliding around because if it all slides together, then nothing happens here. And so that clamps the black piece in place and then I have a zip tie going around this to make sure that that clip doesn't ever come off again. All right, now that that's fixed, I'm gonna go ahead and install the new speed and reference sensors. I got the new speed and reference sensors in and everything else back together. 
That's right, I'd like to get the head back on tonight, but I've actually got a lot of stuff that I need to reinstall underneath the car here. It isn't a very fun job, but it must be done. All right guys, last night I pretty much got everything buttoned up underneath the car. Today I thought that I would go ahead and get the head on, but first I thought we'd take a look at what we have left here in this bottom end gasket set. You can see that I have the rear main seal and I won't be installing that. And then I have the water pump gasket here. So today I thought I'd go ahead and put the head on. And so I've got the head gasket set here. And before I open that, I got some parts in and I thought that we'd have a look at these. Alright, so I've got the new power steering hose for this car. I picked up some more full senders. They're just the cheap ones, but we'll see if they work. And then I've got some oil filters. Then I have a return hose that goes to the water pump here for the heater core. And then I have two sets of belts, so I'll have two timing belts and two balance shaft belts. Alright, so today I want to replace this power steering hose here and also this hose right here. But before I do that, I thought I'd go ahead and open this head gasket set and we'll start putting the head on. Before installing the cylinder head, I always like to rotate the engine and make sure I get all the dust and debris out of the cylinders. And I should have rotated the engine last night after installing new speed and reference sensors, but usually you can just look at the bottom of the ones you pulled and they'll tell you whether or not you have an issue. So I didn't think much of it, but as I was rotating the engine today, I noticed that it was making this noise. So that isn't good. The reference sensors are not gapped correctly. And upon closer inspection, you can see that this one here was sliding across the starter ring. So I'm gonna have to remove the air oil separator once more and go in there and gap the speed and reference sensors correctly. So all right, I've got the sensors and the bracket removed now and ordinarily you don't have to remove the bracket to set the gap, but as you can see, this one is broken and I can't set the gap precise enough. So I'm going to have to replace it and the only brackets that I have laying around have the OT sensor. So I'm gonna have to cut this off in order for it to work. And a lot of people like to wonder why it takes so long to put these engines together. Well, a lot of times it's because you run into something like this, something that you don't really expect. Everything looked good until I got it all back together. So here are the two parts side by side. This is the one that came off the car that's broken. And this one here has an extra sensor hole. And in order for me to get this to work, I need to cut this off because if I just try and install it as it is, it's gonna hit the bell housing here. The later bell housings actually have a hole here and that allows for another sensor but if you try and install this on an earlier car then it's just not going to work all right i cut that ot sensor mount off there and it looks as good as the one that came originally from the factory i've got the other bracket in now so i'm going to go ahead and set the gap all right, I've got the gap set now, so I'll go ahead and put the sensors back in. So, all right, I now have the speed and reference sensor set, and it's no longer grinding against the starter ring. So now I have the reference sensor set, I'll go ahead and install a new oil pressure sender. All right, I have the new oil pressure sender in now. All right, now that I've got the engine cleaned up and the speed and reference sensor is gapped correctly, I'm going to install the head.
All right, guys, I've got the head back on now, so that's just about going to do it for this video. Be sure to like and subscribe. I upload videos like this almost every week. And come join us on Facebook. I'll leave a link in the description below. I also want to thank everyone who supports this channel on Patreon since these videos would not be possible without you. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.